Eve Ensler is one of the most inspiring artist activist leaders I've ever known. Yeah, really. She has used the arts as a vehicle to accelerate the awakening of mass consciousness and to advance women's rights, healing, and justice through cultural activism more effectively and more globally than anyone in history. The thing I find most awe-inspiring about Eve, though, is the way that she continues to learn about the very revolution that her life is in service to through her own body. After being diagnosed with uterine cancer and finding the boundary between her body and the world irrevocably blurred, she healed herself through a mix of medical treatment, soul inquiry, and reconnection with the natural world, and ultimately through art as well. A playwright, performer, and activist, Eve is of course most widely known as the author of The Vagina Monologues, which has been translated into countless languages and performed by women and girls all over the planet. It may indeed be the single most performed and impactful play ever written. Eve used the unparalleled viral success of the vi Vagina Monologues to launch V-Day, a planetary movement to end the global pandemic of violence against women and girls. V-Day <laughs> has engaged and educated millions of people and raised well over $100 million to fund thousands of projects around the world, including community-based anti-violence programs and safe houses in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Haiti, Kenya, Egypt, and Iraq. The V-Day movement continues to grow and develop new projects and strategies because Eve is a fount of renewable energy and continuously evolving creativity. In 2011, Eve co-founded the City of Joy, a transformational leadership community for women survivors of violence in the war-ravaged Democratic Republic of Congo. To this day, one in three women on the planet are beaten or raped during their lifetimes. This adds up to more than a billion women. So five years ago, Eve had the vision to launch One Billion Rising, a global call to women survivors of violence and those who love them to gather in public places in front of official buildings to break the silence and release their stories through art, dance, marches, rituals, song, spoken word, and testimonials. One Billion Rising was the biggest mass action to end violence against women in human history with events in over 200 countries led by wildly diverse women and it has become an ever-evolving annual event each February. Eve consistently and boldly aims high and speaks truth to power, trusting her vision in spite of the inevitable pushback she encounters. When she first named the goal of one billion, her board said, surely you must mean one million. She did not fold. Tomorrow evening, Eve and master drummer Afia Walking Tree, whose music we've been honored to experience here each morning on the stage with Deb Lane, will be leading a drums, drum circle and dancing celebration of One Billion Rising's fifth year right outside on the sun stage, which everyone is invited to participate in. But Eve's unparalleled achievements in her activism shouldn't obscure the fact that she is above all an artist. She's also an extraordinary speaker. Her talk here two years ago, a radical feminist reconstruction of the story of Genesis, recast an archetypal Eve to unearth and reframe a root story of patriarchy was so radical, profound, and funny that the YouTube video went more viral than any presentation we have ever had here. But this morning, this morning we want to highlight Eve, the author, artist, and performer, the one who is always experimenting and pushing the boundaries, 
So now we are offering you a sampling of an act from her recent work, The Fruit Trilogy. Coconut is a daring journey into a woman's encounter with her own body. Please join me in welcoming the one and only Eve Ensler. Some people go to church. Some people go to the mosque or a temple. I come here. <laughs> I realize it's a bathroom, but don't underestimate the mystical implications of the bathroom. It may not be big enough for a priest or a rabbi or iman, but that might be a good thing. This is a different kind of practice. I have a towel, it is soft, I spread it out. I have candles, I am lighting them. There are no wafers here, no fasting, no typical sacraments, but I have oil. We will get to that in a minute. By the way, I have never invited anyone in here before. It's kind of private, <laughs> intimate. <laughs> it just felt like the right time. And you feel like the right people. <laughs> I've already taken my bath. I didn't think you needed to be here for that. <laughs> I'm scrubbed, I'm clean, I'm ready. This is a lengthy process. I sometimes spend hours in here, but don't worry. Don't worry, I'm not going to hold you prisoner. I know about attention span. Today, I am beginning with my feet. They've been calling me. By the way, I never know what is going to happen, so this will be as surprising to you as it is to me. That is what is most exciting about this practice. It's always different. We don't recite the same scripture over and over or sing the same hymns by rote. No, it is not like that at all. I am beginning with my foot, my right foot. I begin slow. Do you know slow? Do you know slow? Can you touch your feet? Go ahead right now. Everybody touch your feet. Don't be shy. Feel your feet. I would actually say take off your shoes. Just take off your shoes. <laughs> take them off. Put your feet on the ground. Thank you. Before we start, you should know that this practice has evolved, or I should say it evolved me. In the beginning, I was just rubbing oil on my skin. I was just trying to make myself soft. In all honesty, at the beginning, I wasn't even doing this for me. <laughs> Not at all. Like everything else, this body only existed in relationship to the person who was touching it, as a thing that might be touched. I oiled myself and I imagined the hands of a lover. I imagined him or her rubbing her or his hands over my flesh gasping at the softness. Oh my God, <laughs> you are so soft. <laughs> Could anyone be this soft? <laughs> as if softness were the ultimate state of sensual achievement, <laughs> as if softness were my calling card. Perhaps I was overcompensating, okay? I've never been really fond of my totally flat ass. <laughs> my hair is unpredictable and, should I say it, I will, I could be thinner. Okay, at least I could be soft. <laughs> my soft, delicious skin that you melt into like butter. All the deficits would be forgiven then, all the ways I don't measure up, and guess what? It worked. <laughs> A lover would get turned on just touching my skin, just rubbing up against my naked silkiness. One time, I was at a party, and this very sexy woman was talking to me and accidentally brushed up against my exposed arm. I was wearing a halter top. She just stopped, she didn't speak. She just touched my arm and touched it again as if to make sure it was really that soft. <laughs> she rubbed her own naked arm against my arm like a cat and then she put her cheek, her face on it. <laughs> and before I knew it, we were at her apartment on her bed, naked and wild. <laughs> anyway, anyway, sorry, back to my feet, my foot. 
first I put oil in my hand and I let it sit there for a bit, you know, feel the liquid warmth penetrating whew, my skin. Then I put the oil on my foot. I begin to rub, massage the oil. If you have the correct amount of oil, your hands will glide. Gliding is crucial to the practice. <laughs> Gliding is the first level of realization that this practice is of you and beyond you. You want to glide. You will discover your hands have this sudden capacity to transform what is dead and finished. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that I can affect myself. I love how my fingers glide and slide over my flesh, how all the icky dry skin is made moist and alive with just a passing of the slippery goo. I love how my hands are now agents of emollient change. <gasps> I adore that word, emollient. Can we say it together? Emollient, emollient, liquid, ecstatic, ancient, emollient, emollient. We are engaged in a transformative process of emollient change. <laughs> and we have only begun. <laughs> I put some more oil. It's all about the oil, coconut oil. Do you know coconut oil? Yes. It's very popular. There's a reason. It is magic. Do you know it can take you places? I am applying the oil slowly, carefully to my foot. The oil begins to direct my hands, leading them right under into the hard, cracked, calcified places of what is buried and forgotten, leading them deep under the flesh, leading my hands like oracles of anatomy down into the underworld of time and mystery. I close my eyes and I oil deeper. Wow! It is beginning! Oh my God! Each time it is so different. Hard to believe all this lives inside us. Hard to believe that the oil in my hands can activate so much. Here's what I'm seeing today. Close your eyes, maybe you can see it too. Ancient tattooed bodies. Flashes of extreme, almost blinding light. Color. Huge, translucent wings, earth that is literally breathing, forest, forest, engulfing green forest, and there are birds, oh my God, hundreds of crazy cartoon-like birds falling, crazy, flying, dancing in the sky, oh my God, oh no, oh no, I'm rubbing and it's getting a little painful, oh my God, <gasps> okay, this pain used to scare me, but now I know it's the indicator. Right? The signpost of where I need to go. I must rub into the pain, rub into this gathering of images and remains and broken edges of the story of the world. I must rub into the place of the forbidden. And wait, wait, wait. There is something else today. Oh my God, there is something new. It appears to be a door. I am rubbing into an opening, a portal on the right side of my foot right here. Oh, this is a first. It's actually very painful. Oh my God, more painful than I can remember. There is an entryway, a threshold. Ah, ah, it's insisting I rub deeper, rub deeper. Ah, ah, what is happening? My body is becoming other than body. My hands, no longer hands, but heat seeking arrows. The oil dissolving into liquid streams of light illuminating the path of arteries and blood vessels and now streams of thought and memory. I am an archaeologist of muscle and bone and cells and molecules of flesh engaged in a secret, sacred excavating. All that is hard is beginning to loosen and the scarred plaque of centuries of betrayal, brutality is splintering, erupting. Oh, wow, maybe I should stop. Well, it's a little scary. It's a little scary bearing down into the core of your being, bursting open what has been buried. This practice is not for the faint of heart. It's solely dependent on your willingness to touch yourself, your willingness to be messenger of your own deliverance. There is no one else who can take you there. I rub deeper now, harder, 
And now there is another door behind that first door, a psychic elevator door pulling me down to the blood pool of loss and agony that flows through the body that is my body, this blood that is our body, that is our loss, that flows so seamlessly, so overwhelmingly into all the accumulated losses, flows into the blood on the wastelands, on the charred fields, on the deltas and deserts and cities and bedrooms and alleyways. Blood from the thousands fleeing, running for their lives, reeling with mad screams, at first just anonymous faces, anonymous masses now coming into focus. Faces of sisters, mothers, daughters, faces caught half naked, caught dancing, ecstatic, alive, rising in the rhythms of the earth, with earth, as earth. Women now bleeding, now bending, now bruised, now tense, now burning in fires, made to exterminate their holy flesh, their holy destiny. Women running, running, captured, crucified, raped, dazed and disoriented. Their wails and agony seemingly unremembered seemingly unheard, all here, all here forever in my body, in the collective sister body, passed like psychic plutonium generation after generation into the bloodstream of every girl. Warning, danger, terror, don't go there. Lodged in every fiber of our muscular lineage, my lineage, separating me from myself, us from each other, rubbing deeper, deeper, not stopping now. That is the trick. Always keep going, keep rubbing, going in. The pain cannot stop you. Go to the pain, drill into the center. There you will find a softness, <gasps> like cream in a cookie, or sweet lava in the core of the earth. There in a pain is a door that seems steely and impenetrable at first, but as you rub, that impossible obstacle is melted so easily by the chemistry of your touch, by the power of your yearning, and you see there is nothing there at all, nothing hard, nothing but what you needed to be there, and now you don't. The door becomes mist, becomes light, and this light intensifies, and there is suddenly an illumined shape. Not a human, really, no, not, not, nothing you can define, but her. You will say her. Her. She was always there after the pain. I am rubbing into her this pleasure, this presence, this she, presence and reflection, formidable and deeply kind. She is calling me, calling me, beckoning me to come to the fire, beckoning me not to fear the flames, beckoning me to dance, dance, urging me to enter this carnival of light, urging me to dance into the dance flames and heat. And she has never asked me to go here before. And to be honest, I'm a little scared of burning. The flames are pretty high, but she's kind of pushing me now, pushing me. Yes, I enter the flames, step into the fire. I have no choice. And she has never been so clear and she has never steered me wrong. I step into the fire, whoa. I am in, and wow, it is hot, hot, so hot. I don't want to get out, though. I'm burning, I'm burning, but not the way I thought of burning. Burning, and I want this burning, and suddenly the flames are friends, partners, lovers, dancing flame partners, and they are taking me, spinning me, and lifting me, and bending me back, and flipping me around to the music of fire in the dance of burning. I am a flame, a dancing flame, and it's all I have ever wanted to be, a dancing flame. Call me dancing flame. <laughs> and as I dance, all that doesn't belong to me, all the dark yuck that has attached itself to me and defined me and kept me from being a dancing flame is melting. All the mean words and the hurt to my body, all the ways you try to make me smaller and feel bad about this bigness, this fire inside me, all the ways you made me distrust what I know and who I am, burning off away, and my body, oh my God, my body is dissolving too. Oh, there goes my arm <laughs> and my legs and my body. I am purely flame, purely fire. I am heat and I am hot. I am what's coming and I'm what's never been. 
I am here and not here. I am element and I am memory. I am alive as fire. Can you believe all that was happening in my foot? <laughs> Hysterical, right? Wow, I am hot. I am so hot. Okay, don't do that now. Don't get into your heads now. Don't start with the words, you know, she's uh, exhibitionist, provocative, self ejectified Please don't do that. I'm going to ask you to suspend those characterizations as they are rote and obvious and hinged to puritanical mindsets and surface constructions. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to actually stay here with me and trust that I know what I'm doing and I know what I want, okay? <laughs> the fire was a teacher. The fire made me hot and stripped me naked, and as fire, I have to burn through. What if you, okay, I want you to imagine this. What if you, without touching, without owning, without possessing, without fucking, without having, without masturbating, without even having a clue really what was going on, what if you were here to sh simply share my delight? What if you were here to be my witness? I really need you to be my witness. We all need to be witnessed, seen. We need to be seen for how else do we know we exist. And for so long I have not existed, or only existed, and I know there are many women here who will understand this, only existed in how I serve, how I take care of, or give pleasure, or make someone else happy. I am trying to exist right now as a being as a body oiling myself, you watching and doing nothing but watching, what if you were there, not to be titillated, but instead to watch, learn, appreciate, perceive, understand my pleasure, but not in a lascivious way. Lascivious meaning lewd, meaning lustful, meaning lecherous, meaning you get to get something out of me oiling myself. No, I'm really asking you not to do that. Can you imagine not doing that? Can you imagine watching, witnessing me, and enjoying my pleasure, trying to feel what I'm feeling, not to take you somewhere, or make you hard, or wet, or ready, or sure of yourself? Can you imagine watching me might not even be about you? It's about me oiling myself and you not doing anything. I know we're in a theater. I know this was billed as a performance, but what if we call it something else? Let's call it a shared private coconut oil happening. <laughs> a, po a cosmic body lift, a ma mystical flesh occurrence. I want to know my body in front of you. Strangers, yes, but human. I want to know my body without having to give anything, without having to arch my spine or make idiotic stripper poses or pouty baby faces or idiotic squeaking noises. I want to know my body without projection or infection, distraction or attraction. I want to know my body through you seeing my body, seeing me not as an instrument of labor or service or as a vehicle, or a cavern, or an object of worship, or a vessel of sin. I want to feel my flesh in your presence and oil my being in your sight. You, my mother onlooker, my father spectator, my brother bystander, my sister observer. I want the power of your watching, the force of your acknowledgement, not for praise or judgment, permission or acclaim, I want to know that I am safe in the open eyes of the world. <laughs> Able to explode into the fullness of every cell, each flesh portal expand into mad divinity. I want your agenda-free gaze to be my safety, my sureness, I need you to be proof, to testify to my liberation. Your witness is my liberation. Your seeing is my freedom. I want to dance for you and move this oil created
creation for you, and I want you to enjoy me. Enjoy me, enjoy me, and enjoy me enjoying me. I want you to move your bodies with me so you feel infinite body, vessel body, body of light. I want us to move and break out of this collective penitentiary. Our breath and our muscles and our cocks and our cunts shackled in shame and guilt and misery. We need to oil ourselves and slip out of this fucking cage through these bars and then we need to dance and spin and scream ah! and burn. Come on, let it out. Ah! We need to burn and burn and burn until we dissolve our bodies and finally there is nothing, nothing between us. I begin with my feet. <laughs> There's a door there. I begin slow. Do you know slow? Take off your shoes and rub your feet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.